How's it going everybody? The video everyone's been looking for. How to properly set up the engine bracket on your OMC Cobra. Now you're seeing on mine, it, mine is flipped around a certain direction based on the need of the boat. You'll also see it on the other side of the exhaust manifold. Pretty much once you see how this operation takes place on my configuration here, you should be able to apply that on your own boat, on your own OMC and, and figure out how to get something working or maybe how to see if it is working um, already. So let's go over some, some items you see in the shot here. You've got the intermittent switch, you've got your overstroke switch. Now without further ado, how do we test if these are working? Uh, some really simple tests first on this intermittent switch on this other side. Uh, obviously you've got two wires on this side. Um, you can test that later but there's actually a little plunger you want to reach in there and make sure the plunger clicks. That's the, the very simple part of the intermittent switch to see if that's working. And the other thing too is you go to this over switch, or sorry, overstroke switch and click that one too. All right, so that's your first obvious test to see if you have a plunger on either one of these that are stuck. If you do, then you're gonna have some issues there. Now this next part can get kind of confusing, so I'm gonna just tell it to you once and then we'll 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 go on past that. So the interrupt switch, which is this guy down here, this one is considered a normally open switch. The overstroke switch above it is considered a normally closed switch. So what that means is if you run a continuity tester on this when it's not down, listen for it. So Right now, if you run a continuity between these two, you should have no continuity. That's what a normally closed switch is like. On these two wires down here on your interrupt switch, if you run a continuity test between these, this is a normally open switch. So considering it's not being pressed down by this shift bracket, then you should have continuity. So that's how you test the overstroke and intermittent switch. Now, what what's left, after you have these four wires is these two. So how do you, maybe you don't even need to get into this and, and troubleshoot your engine bracket or specifically in this case your ESA system because maybe it's already configured right. How do you know if your ESA uh, is working? Well, you can actually um, test it while the engine's running. You can flip this just at, at an idle and neutral. Just do that. Does it stall when you do it? That's, that's the quick way of testing um, while it's on. Do I recommend that? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, if you like that method. If you have access to a uh, digital multimeter, like I have here, it's actually easier to test it um, with it off. There's another method to do that, and I'll show you that here. You can see I have it set currently at, on the uh, continuity test. Let's, um, let's do some things with this so you can see how that works. All right. So... You see this wire comes out. This is one we talked about. It has this little clamp on it. What you're going to do is you're going to take the prongs of your um, continuity tester and you're going to slide them in. Don't try not to damage these uh, wires in there. But you can. There's some play in this rubber boot where you can slide one on one side and one on the other. I'm going to go ahead and hit pause real quick and do that. Okay. So you can see here. I slid the prongs inside of the connector there very easily. It didn't damage anything. I've done this multiple times. And do we have continuity? You can see we're on the continuity test right now and it, it is reading that the two are, um, it, it is detecting some continuity there. But um, let me show you real quick. I've on purpose configured my engine bracket where it will not uh, shift correctly. So, um, and, and when I say shift, it won't shift right because the overstroke switch, oh, just gave you a clue right there. The over, uh, overstroke switch is it configured right on the engine bracket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my partner shift into the forward gear, which should operate this overstroke. Ah, uh, see? So the problem is right now, it's in a forward gear installing the engine out. That is, that's, that's bad. 
So let's go in reverse and see what it does when it's in reverse. Okay, so what you saw there is we shifted this engine into reverse with no engine shift assistance. That's also a problem because that could damage your dog clutch, it could damage your reverse gear. The, um, yeah, it, it just, it's bad. So this is a good example of your ESA system not functioning properly. Now, let me show you real quick. Um, I'm gonna put it back in neutral. Okay, we're in neutral. Here, here's what should happen, and I'm, I'm not gonna um, have my partner shift uh, the bracket, but you see this, they call this like a W. All right, so it goes into forward gear. When you hear the audible continuity, that tells you that it's sending power to the ESA system. All right, so we shift the first, intermittently, it trips the engine up. Then what it's supposed to do is when you go uh, maybe in a forward gear, and that's as we're doing this. Watch this real quick. All right. And then this is how it's supposed to work. And you hear the continuity. What that's telling you is it's sending power to the ESA system to slow it down. And what it typically does is it slows your idle down to around yeah, like four to 600 RPMs. And that it makes it easy for uh, shifting right so sometimes you'll see people say I can't shift out of reverse or I can't shift into a forward gear that's typically because ESA um, isn't kicking in and your RPMs are too high so uh, let's let's change uh, switch gears for a second here let's go to the other side and I'm going to show you what the ESA um, actually looks like okay so we're on the left bank right now this is your ESA module itself as you see here, we got a lot of wires. These go uh, in line with the distributor, uh, more so with the coil. Uh, the coil is where this thing reduces the power to, so it, it slows the idle down. One of the things you can do here is you can check your connector and make sure you don't have any frayed wires. There's a lot of hot stuff right in this area, especially with the uh, an engine manifold right there. So you just want to make sure you don't have any wires that are damaged so you know spend some time here and, and look through everything and make sure you don't have any damage that, that's going to be a good way to make sure your uh, the ESA module is working correctly and then you can also trace this wire uh, as it goes into the coil and whatnot but th this is going to be the easiest way as I mentioned to see is your ESA systems working right all right it's shifting and I'll show you a better way to test all right uh, if you have an 86 or an 87 model, they did have a known issue with this spring. It's just a V spring. You take it out by loosening this nut and you take this whole thing out. Uh, 86 and 87 OMCs, this spring was way too tight. And because it was it was so tight, uh, when this cable went to go flex on the trunnion, it would not allow for an ESA shift. So. That's something to consider. If you're an ESA uh, user on an 86 or 87, maybe even 88, maybe 89, I would just say for sure 87, 86. Look at this spring. It's about uh, $10 for a replacement, but uh, if you have the newer models, probably don't consider that as a, a point of failure moving forward. But uh, So your overstroke switch, your intermittent switch, you, you can see how we've troubleshot those. Pretty simple. The purpose of this video for the part one piece was to show you how an engine bracket is not configured properly and how to properly test your ESA system. So as I mentioned, just to recap, plug in a multimeter on this right here and check for continuity. This right here, when it fires, ESA kicks in, right? That's what it should be doing in a properly working system. When you shift this into first gear, ESA reverse or actually back in the neutral you need to have an interrupt and then into reverse so every operation of this engine bracket should trip the ESA to slow the system down if it's not then you have some issues so I hope this video part one was helpful to everybody stay tuned for part two uh, there's probably going to be a part three where we can configure um, the shift in the the, the console and those videos are going to come soon. So stay tuned. I hope everyone liked this part one video. 
and there's more to come. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. Have a good one. Look forward to part two soon.